welcome to the second lesson of the 8th module which is on combined stresses part 2. In fact, uh, in the last lesson we have uh, discussed about or we have introduced the concept of the combined stresses in a member wherein a particular member is subjected to a combination of loads uh, say for example, axial load and the torsion or the torsion and the bending or could be axial load and bending and various combinations of these individual loads. Now, we have also looked into that how do you compute the stresses when a particular member is subjected to the combinations of these different loads. Now, in this particular lesson we are going to look into some more aspects of such combined loads and how do we analyze them and thereby we compute the values of the stresses. Hence, it is expected that once this particular lesson is completed one should be uh, able to be acquainted with some more aspects of combined loadings in a particular member and thereby the evaluation of the com com combined stresses in members and one should be in a position to evaluate stresses in structural members due to such a combination of loadings or combined loadings. The scope of this particular lesson therefore, includes the recapitulation of previous lesson. Now, I will be looking into some aspects of the previous lesson which we have uh, already discussed and that we will be doing through the question answer session. Also, uh, in this particular lesson we will be using the already developed formulae for evaluation of stresses for the combined action of loadings. Now, as I have told you in the last lesson that in the previous modules we have developed some formulae for the individual load cases like for example, we have looked into that how to evaluate stress in a member when that particular member is subjected to axial load or if a particular member is subjected to a twisting moment or torsion then how do we calculate the stresses because of the torsion in a member or if the member is subjected to uh, transverse loading for which there will be bending in the member and thereby there will be bending stresses or shear stresses and we have seen how to evaluate those stresses because of such bending moment and shear force. Now, here we are going to make use of those formulae which we have derived earlier uh, in evaluating the stresses because of the combined loading. Also, we will be looking into some examples for evaluation of stresses in structural members which will be arising due to this combined loadings. Now, let us look into the answers of the questions. Uh, which we had uh, posed last time. The first question which was posed was how will you evaluate the combined stresses if the member is subjected to an axial load and bending moment. That means, now that partic a particular member is subjected to not only the axial load, but also subjected to a bending moment. Now, in such situation how do you com calculate the combined stresses. Now, we have looked into in the last lesson that there could be cases with reference to either a cantilever beam or simply supported beam or for that matter uh, any of such members where it is supported uh, at suitable supports and is subjected to uh, axial load as well as the transverse load. Now, when this particular member is subjected to as in this case or in this case where you have the axial load and the transverse load and here you have the moment as well. Now, uh, if we like to calculate stress at any cross section in the member, then uh, the stress will be because of this axial load and this lateral load is going to cause a bending moment m and shear force v at this particular cross section and there will be stresses because of this bending moment m and because of the shear force v. And finally, we will have to calculate the resulting stress because of all three actions. Now, as you know, uh, we have seen that when a particular member is subjected to axial load, it is subjected to a stress which we call as normal stress which is P by A and since the load is compressive, so the stress also is compressive and which is uniform throughout the cross section. Now, because of the bending, there will be uh, bending stress which we evaluate from m y by i as we have seen earlier that sigma is equals to m y by i 
where m is the bending moment, y is the distance at which you are computing the bending stress from the neutral axis and i is the moment of inertia of the cross section of uh, with respect to the neutral axis. Now, uh, as we have seen that this bending stress with respect to the neutral axis where the stress is 0 uh, causes compression and tension in this particular case and uh, the top part above neutral axis is under compression and the bottom part uh, below neutral axis is under tension. Now, bending also produces normal stress as we have seen in the cross section. So, if we combine these two normal stresses together, the normal stress produced by the axial load and the normal stress produced by the bending, then we get a combined stress form either in this form or in this form or in this form and we have discussed this why we get these three different situations. Now, uh, apart from this uh, bending stress and the normal stress, the transverse loading will cause a shear force as well and because of shear force there will be shear stress in the member at that particular cross section. So, we got to compute the value of the shear stress at the point where we are computing the uh, bending stress and the normal stress and as you know the shear stress tau is equals to V q by I b and this we have seen uh, this particular formula how to calculate the value of the shear stress when we know the shear force at that particular cross section. So, we know the normal stress because of the axial load we can compute the value of the normal stress because of the bending and we can compute the value of the shear stress because of the shearing force which is acting. Now, the normal stresses because of the axial load and the bending can be combined together to give the resulting normal stress and normal stress and shear stress the two stresses which are acting in two different planes we compute the values using either the transformation equations or using the Mohr circle. Now, if you look into that uh, in this particular figure at these three locations if we like to compute the value of the stresses here we have the normal this normal stress sigma which is the p by a plus m y by i or plus and minus depending on the magnitudes of these values and tau is going to give you the shearing stress which is v q by i b. So, we have the normal stress and we have the shearing stress and this resulting stresses because of the normal stress and the shearing stresses can be computed from the Mohr circle as you know that this is the sigma axis and this is the tau positive direction. Now, here if you plot the values of the normal stress and the shearing stress as we are computing from this formula and since you do not have any sigma y. So, sigma y and tau and if you join these two points together you get the circle and thereby this gives you the maximum value of the normal stress which you call as the sigma 1 or the principal stress. In fact, this is the uh, answer for the second question as well. In fact, if you look into the question which we have for the second one that how will you evaluate the principal stresses in if the member is subjected to axial load and bending moment. Now, as we have seen in the first one that when you have the axial load and the bending moment we can compute the values of the normal stress the axial will give you the direct normal stress and bending will give you the normal stress in terms of compression and tension uh, with respect to the neutral axis and you can calculate the resulting normal stresses and individually you can calculate the shear stress from the shear formula which is Vq by Ib. Now, using this if we like to calculate the resulting stress which we call as the maximum value of the tensile or compressive stress which is the principal stress maximum or minimum value. Uh, that we compute from the Mohr circle and this is what uh, has been done over here that uh, we can have this kind of relationship that means this is for the normal stress and this is for the shearing stress and based on this normal stress and shear stress we can compute the value of the maximum principal stress sigma 1 or the minimum stress sigma 2 uh, these are the principal stresses and also we can compute the value of the in plane shear stresses that what is the maximum value of the shearing stress that will be occurring at any point. Now, the third question which was posed was that what will be the value of the normal stress at the neutral axis and probably I can answer this from this particular configuration itself or from this figure. Now, you see that we have an element chosen which is lying on the neutral axis. Now, as you know that when you compute the bending stress the bending stress 
gives you a distribution linear distribution with respect to the neutral axis you get a compressive force or tensile force or tensile and compressive depending on uh, the kind of loading you have. Now, on the neutral axis the value of the normal stress which is arising from bending is equals to 0. Now, if you have the combination of axial and the bending then uh, the normal stress which will be occurring at the neutral axis point or along the neutral axis is only for the axial stress which is the normal stress sigma x equals to p by a and there would not be any con contribution from the bending along the neutral axis. However, if you choose the point above the neutral axis or below the neutral axis there you will have the contribution from the bending and uh, thereby you will have the resulting normal stress. So, as you can see that all three questions which we had were related to the actions of the combined loading where a member is subjected to the axial load and bending moment and when axial load and bending moment occurs in a particular member simultaneously we compute the resulting normal stress axial will give you the normal stress bending also will give you the normal stress and we can sum them together to get to get the resulting normal stress and then because of the presence of the transverse load at that particular section there will be shearing force as well and shearing force will produce the shearing stress. So, you can have the resulting stress from the calculated value of the normal stress and the shearing stress using the Mohs circuit. And now you can uh, visualize that when we had discussed uh, in module 1 the transformation equation or the Mohs circle of stress where because of the given stresses sigma and tau we could evaluate that what will be the value of the principal stresses. Now, as you can see from the practical examples that a beam member is subjected to axial pull and the transverse load because of some loading situations where we compute the normal stress and the shearing stress individually and then combine them together using the Mohs circle to find out the resulting maximum or minimum normal stresses and the maximum value of the shearing stresses. Well, this is what is uh, shown over here that if you get the uh, stresses normal and the shearing stresses then you can plot them in the Mohs circle here the normal stress is negative and the shearing stress is positive and that is what you are getting corresponding to the first element and when your normal stress is positive and the shearing stress also is positive you get the point over here and since sigma y is 0 we get the other point over here we join them together this is the center line of the Mohs circle and the maximum value of the normal stress which is represented by this point in the circle gives you the maximum normal stress or the maximum tensile stress in the member and this is the value of the sigma 2 or the minimum uh, normal stress and this is how we compute from the uh, Mohs circle. Now, let us look into that uh, if a member is subjected to an axial pull along with a twisting moment. Now, in the last lesson we had looked into some numerical examples where a member was subjected to the axial load and the transverse load which was causing bending in the member. Thereby, the member was under the action of axial load and the bending. Now, uh, in this particular case we are going to consider that if a member is subjected to the axial load and a twisting moment then what happens to the combined action of this loading. Now, if we are interested to find out the stress at this particular point, uh, let us say this point is A, where uh, we like to compute uh, stresses because of the uh, loading actions like you have the axial pull P and there is a twisting moment which is uh, uh, positive uh, in, the in the sense that as we have defined earlier that when the vectorial direction points towards the positive x axis, we call that as a positive twisting moment and at this end a positive twisting moment is acting in this member. Now, as we have seen earlier that because of this twisting moment, uh, we get the shear stress at uh, different point which is given by T rho by G. Now, from the center if we go uh, along the radius, uh, this is rho. So, maximum shear stress will be occurring on the surface where uh, R is maximum. Now, given the value of the twisting moment T, we can compute the value of the shear stress uh, if we know the radius of this cross section and J is the polar moment of inertia which is I x plus I y or in this particular case it will be I y plus I z as we have uh, called x as the 
longitudinal axis. Now, uh, so we have the action for the axial load as a normal stress which is P by A and twisting moment will give us the shear stress tau. So, if we look into this particular element, uh, this element will be subjected to the shearing action now because uh, there is a twisting moment uh, which is a positive twisting moment on this element will have the shear which will be acting in this form and that is what is represented over here uh, which is resulted from this twisting moment T and this is these are the complementary shear because of this shear and sigma is the normal stress that is acting. Now, if this particular element is subjected to shear, uh, normal stress sigma and shearing stress tau, then the maximum normal stress we can compute again from the Mohr circle of stress. We, this is the sigma axis, this is the tau axis and we can represent this particular uh, plane where we have normal stress sigma and shear stress here is negative. So, this is sigma and shear is negative. So, on this side the point will be taken and for the other side the normal stress is 0 and you have the shearing stress which is positive. So, the point will be here. Now, if you join these two points, the line which will cross the sigma axis at the point that is the center of the circle. So, if we draw a circle with this radius, then uh, we get the resulting Mohr circle and this is the maximum value of the normal stress which we get from this particular circle and this is the minimal minimum value of this uh, normal stress, this we call as sigma 2. So, this is sigma 1 and sigma 2, we can compute the value of the normal stresses also, uh, this is the maximum and the maximum and the minimum value of the uh, shearing stresses. This is the positive tau, this is the negative tau and this is the maximum shear stress that will be occurring at that particular point because of the action of axial pull and twisting moment. We will look into some examples how to compute this uh, using numerical values. Now, let us look into that if a particular member is subjected to the again a combined loading action but here the lo individual loadings are bending and twisting moment which are acting simultaneously in a member. So, we had seen the action of a twisting moment in a bar that how do you calculate the shearing stress because of the twisting moment. Also, we have looked into that if a beam is subjected to the transverse loading, then how do you calculate the bending moment and the shear force and consequently how do you compute the bending stress and the shearing stress. Now, if the member is subjected to the twisting moment as well as the bending, then what will be the consequence or how do you calculate the stresses in such members. Now, uh, if you look into this that here we have a uh, twisting moment which is acting again uh, it is a positive uh, twisting moment and a load P is acting at the end of this cantilever beam, uh, this is fixed at this particular end. Now, this load which is acting at the free end of the cantilever beam uh, will produce a moment at this section where we are interested to find out the stresses. We are interested to find out the stress, stresses at point A and B on this particular cross section, let us say which is at a distance of A from the free end. Now, at this particular cross section, the load P is going to cause a bending moment M which is equals to P into A and also there will be a shear force which is equals to P. In fact, in if we take a free body diagram there, uh, we have P here on this, the moment will be in this direction and the shear force will be in this particular direction. Therefore, both moment and shear will be negative. Now, uh, physically if you look into in this particular member, when this is uh, loaded at the tip, the deflected form will be in this and thereby the top surface will be under tension and the bottom will be under compression and that we can uh, verify from the numerical values as well or from the expressions as well. Now, you see m is minus p into a and as you know that sigma is equals to minus m y by i. So, for m if we put minus p a into a, so this is plus p a y by i. So, thereby, thereby the stress is becoming positive and positive indicates our tensile stress. So, uh, from the expression also you get the same as you are looking here uh, physically. Now, the question is that when this uh, moment and the shear force is acting at this particular cross section, then what are the kinds of stresses we are going to get at point A and point B. Now, as you know that at point A, 
because of the twisting moment there will be a shearing stress tau 1 which is equals to T into rho by j where T is the twisting moment rho is the value of the radius uh, of the outer point and j is the polar moment of inertia of the cross section. Also there will be shearing stress because of the shear force V, but the point A which is on the top surface there as we have seen the shear stress because of the shear force is equals to 0. So, only contribution of the shear will be from the twisting moment at point A and at point A because of this uh, axial uh, because of the bending because the transverse load P is causing bending at A which is equals to minus P into A will have a normal stress which is m y by i this is sigma x. So, sigma x is equals to m y by i as it is indicated over here. So, the at the top point we will have a normal stress sigma x and there will be shearing stress tau 1 which is arising from the twisting moment only and this is what is the representation of the uh, stress pattern at that particular point A. Now, at point B which is lying in the neutral axis. Now, as you have seen that at the neutral axis level the stress because of the bending is equals to 0. So, there would not be any contribution from the bending thereby the value of the normal stress for that particular point will be 0. So, all we will have at that particular point is the shearing stress which is arising from the twisting moment and the shearing stress which is arising from the shear force value. So, tau 1 is uh, arising from twisting moment and tau 2 is uh, equals to Vq by Ib depending on the amount of shear force you have at that particular section. We can compute the value of tau 2. So, if we combine these two together tau 1 and tau 2 depending on the signs uh, obviously that uh, tau 1 and tau, tau 2 I have uh, shown uh, in general as tau 1 plus tau 2, but uh, depending on the signs it will have its value. Uh, so, you will get a resulting uh, shearing stress at this particular section and you will not have any normal stress. So, these are the two situations that we get corresponding to A and B and if we uh, plot these stresses in the Mohr circle then you get the situations in this form. Now, in the first case where you have the uh, normal stress sigma x and tau 1 this is the point which is representing the stress sigma y is 0 and you have the shearing stress only on that particular plane. So, if you join these two points, this particular point gives you the center of the Mohr circle. So, this as a point and this as a center and this as the radius. If you plot the circle, you get the corresponding Mohr circle of stress and the maximum value of the uh, sigma on this particular circle is this which we call as sigma 1 the uh, maximum normal stress and this particular point is going to give us the minimum normal stress and the maximum value of the shearing stress at that particular point will be equals to the radius which is this, this is uh, tau max. And corresponding to the other one where we do not have normal stress, but we have the resulting stress only tau 1 plus tau 2. So, you see we do not have any normal stress, but on this normal stress is 0, you have only the values of the taus. And uh, if we, so this is the center of the circle and if we plot the Mo circle we get the normal stress as this which is equals to uh, the value of the tau 1 plus tau 2 and the minimum normal stress also is equals to tau 1 plus tau 2 which we have seen is the case of the pure shear. That means, at that particular point the uh, state of pure shear is prevailing and corresponding to that uh, as we have seen in the past that how to compute the value of the normal stresses we get the normal stress as equals to the shearing stress. Well, let us look into uh, the examples. Now, this is the example which uh, I had given to you last time, wherein uh, there is a cantilever beam which is subjected to an axial pull or uh, an axial load which is inclined at an angle of uh, let us say theta. Uh, the magnitude of this load is uh, 50 kilo Newton and this load uh, is acting at an inclination of theta with respect to this axis of the beam. The cross section of the beam is a rectangular one having width 20 millimeter and the depth uh, 120 millimeter. Now, we will have to compute the value the maximum value of the maximum in plane shear stress and of course, the principal stresses. 
So, you got to compute the principal stresses and the maximum in plane shear stresses at point A of the beam. Now, point A as you can see is 20 millimeter away from the neutral axis of the beam and the point is at a distance of 250 millimeter from the edge of the cantilever beam. So, we will have to compute the value of the principal stresses here and the value of the in plane shear stress. Now, this particular load which is acting an, at an inclination with the with reference to the beam axis which is at an angle of theta can be decomposed into uh, two directions one is in the axial direction and another one is in the perpendicular direction and thereby this axial direction force will cause an axial pull or thereby there will be normal stress because of that and the transverse loading which is the component in the vertical direction will cause a bending and a shear at this particular cross section. So, first we will have to find out that what are the magnitudes of the bending moment and what are the magnitude of the shearing force that is acting at this particular section. So, that we can compute the value of the principal stress and the in plane shear stress. Now, this is what uh, is indicated over here. Uh, first thing is that we have decomposed this uh, inclined load which is at an angle of theta in two directions, one in the axial direction, one in the perpendicular to this axis direction. Now, since uh, this is given as 3, uh, 4 and 3, so the hypotenuse is 5. So, thereby cos theta is equal to 4 by 5 which is 0 0.8 and sin theta is equal to 3 by 5 is equal to 0 0.6. So, this value uh, is uh, 50 cos theta, cos theta being 0 0.8, so this is 40 kilo Newton and the vertical component is 50 sin theta which is 0 0.6 is equal to 30 kilo Newton. So, we have an axial force which is of magnitude 40 kilo Newton and we have a transverse load which is 30 kilo Newton which is acting at the tip of the beam. Now, what we are interested in is to evaluate the stress at point A which is uh, located as 20 millimeter from the axis of the beam and 250 millimeter from the edge of the beam from the free end of the beam. Now, as we have seen the axial load 40 kilo Newton will cause a normal stress at this particular cross section which is equals to P by A. So, P is 40 kilo Newton converted into Newton divided by the cross sectional area which is 20 times 120 millimeter square and thereby we get a stress of 16.7 mega Pascal. Now, the point A will be subjected to a bending moment and the magnitude of the bending moment will be equals to the load times this distance 250. Now, if we take the free body at this particular section, we have the load here which is uh, 30 kilo Newton, we have the axial load which is 40 kilo Newton and at this end you have the bending moment M and the shear force V. So, if you take the moment of the forces with respect to this, then we have moment plus 30 times 0.25 is equals to the is equals to 0. So, bending moment we get as 7.5 kilo Newton meter, this is of course, negative since they are acting in the same direction and this will give if we call this as V, so V plus 30 is equals to 0 from the summation of vertical force is equals to 0 that gives V as equals to minus 30 kilo Newton. So, we have a shear force of minus 30 kilo Newton and bending moment of minus 7.5 kilo Newton meter. Now, so because of this negative uh, this will become a positive stress because sigma is equals to minus m y by i and that will give us uh, and since y is positive since it is uh, above the neutral axis. So, we will have a stress normal stress which is tensile uh, which is arising because of the bending and also we have the axial pull which is a tensile force in nature. So, we have a tensile stress uh, because of the axial pull. So, these two stresses since they are of the same nature because they are tensile, so we can add them together. So, uh, normal stress because of the bending is equals to m y by i and as we are seeing here m is equals to 7.5 kilo Newton meter. Uh, into 10 to the power 6 will give you Newton millimeter 
times y, y is 20 because point A is located at 20 millimeter away from the neutral axis and I is equals to uh, 2.88 into 10 to the power 6 which is B h cube by 12. So, once you substitute these values and uh, the resulting value if you calculate it comes to 52 mega Pascal. So, 52 mega Pascal is the normal stress because of the bending and 16.7 mega Pascal is the tensile stress because of the axial pull. So, the total stress that we have uh, because of the bending and the normal stress is equals to 68.7 mega Pascal. So, this is the value of the uh, normal stress sigma. Let us call this as a sigma x that is being in the x direction. Now, uh, in the y directions we do not have any uh, normal stress. So, that is 0. Now, the shear force which we have seen that V is equals to minus 30 kilo Newton uh, will produce the shearing stress at this particular section uh, A which is equals to V q by I B and V is 30 into 10 to the power 3. Now, Q is the first moment of area of the cross section uh, above the section where we are computing the stress. Now, we are computing the stress at this particular section which is uh, 20 millimeter away from the neutral axis. So, uh, this section being 120, the half of it is 60. So, this particular part is 40. So, the area of this part is 40 times 20 and the distance of the CG of this particular section with respect to neutral axis is 40. So, we have 40 times 20 as the area and 40 is the distance of the CG with respect to the neutral axis of the section above which we are computing the stress. So, this is Q and this is I and this is B, B is 20 millimeter. So, if we compute this, we get the shearing stress as 16.7 MPa and since this is negative, it is acting in the negative direction of uh, as we have uh, taken our sign convention. So, this is the state of stress that we have at that particular point A, wherein we have the normal stress sigma x and the shearing stress tau. Now, as you know that at a particular point when we have the combination of the normal stress and the shearing stress, we can calculate the value of the maximum normal stresses and the maximum shear stresses using the transformation equations or using the Mohs circle. Now, if we uh, plot these stresses in the Mohs circle, then we get the stress values in this form that at this particular point where we have the negative shear stress and the positive uh, sigma gives us this particular point. Positive sigma is of magnitude 68.7 that is the total normal stress and this is the shearing stress 16.7 MPa and on the other plane we have the shearing stress only the normal stress is 0. So, if we join these two points uh, wherever it cuts this uh, sigma axis uh, this gives us the center of the Mohs circle. So, with this as center and if we take this as radius, we get the Mohs circle and this is the point which represents the maximum value of the uh, stress. Now, the value of the radius will be equals to the root of this distance, let us say this call as O, this point as A and this as A dashed. So, the radius O A dashed uh, will be equals to root of O A square plus A A dashed square. Now, O a is the distance which is uh, from here to here we know this stress is 68.7 and the center divides this into two equal half. So, 68.7 divided by 2 will give this particular distance because this is sigma x minus sigma y by 2. This particular distance is sigma x minus sigma y by 2 and since sigma y is 0, so this is sigma x by 2 which is uh, 34.35 uh, square and this is 16.7 square. So, we get the radius value as 38.2 MPa. Now, uh, when we like to compute the value of this particular stress sigma 1, sigma 1 will be equals to if we call this as O dash, uh, sigma 1 will be equals to O dash O plus the radius R. And O dash O as you know is 68.7 divided by 2 which is 34.35. So, 34.35 plus 38.2 will give us the stress which is 72.55. This is the value of the maximum normal stress sigma 1 and consequently from this radius if we subtract this, we get the minimum value of the normal stress which is 3.85 which is 38.2 minus uh, 34.35 and the maximum 
value of the normal, I mean the shearing stress is the radius of this particular Mohr circle and this radius is equals to 38.2 MPa. So, this is the value of the in plane shear stress. So, the maximum in plane shear stress that is occurring is 38.2 MPa. So, as you can see that this particular stress normal stress being positive that is tensile in nature. So, the maximum value of the tensile stress that you have is 72.55 MPa which is the maximum principal stress. You have the maximum value of the compressive stress which is 3.85 MPa uh, which is the minimum value of the principal stress and then you have the resulting uh, in plane stress the maximum value of the in plane, in plane stress uh, shearing stress which is 38.2 MPa which is the radius of the Mohr circle. And so, once we know the individual stresses we can compute the resulting stress using this Mohr circle. Now, uh, let us look into the second example which is uh, the combination of the axial pull and the twisting moment. Now, this particular bar is subjected to an axial pull of 80 kilo Newton and also it is subjected to a twisting moment T which is uh, 1.1 kilo Newton meter. So, this particular shaft machine shaft of solid circular cross section of diameter 60 millimeter. So, this is a circular cross section uh, is a solid circular cross section and the diameter of this particular shaft is uh, 60 millimeter. Now, this is subjected to a tensile pull of 80 kilo Newton and a twisting moment T is equals to 1.1 kilo Newton meter. Now, you will have to evaluate the maximum tensile stress and in plane shear stress at point A. So, here this is the point A uh, where uh, you have the where you will have to evaluate what will be the maximum value of the tensile stress and what will be the value of the in plane shear stress. Now, as we were discussing uh, today about the uh, stresses that will develop because of this axial pull and the uh, twisting moment as we have seen that that axial pull is going to give us the, the normal stress that P divided by the cross sectional area the axial pull divided by the cross sectional area will give us the normal stress and the twisting moment is going to produce the shearing stress. So, at the point A on the surface you are going to have the normal stress and the shearing stress and if you have the normal stress and shearing stress you can compute the value of the maximum normal stress and the maximum shear stress from the uh, Mohr circle and let us look into that. Now, here you see that the normal stress which we are going to get uh, because of the axial pull is equals to uh, sigma that is equals to P by A and P is equals to 80 kilo Newton. So, 80 times 10 to the power 3 is so much of Newton divided by area. Now, here since the diameter of the cross section is 60 millimeter and is a solid uh, circular cross section. So, area is equals to pi by 4 times uh, 60 square and that gives us a value of 2827.43. So, the value of the normal stress sigma is equals to 28.3 mega Pascal. And the value of the shearing stress tau as it um, gets developed because of the twisting moment T is equals to T times rho by J and uh, in terms of the diameter if we write uh, tau as equals to T rho as uh, D by 2 and J as pi D 4 divided by 32. As you know that polar moment of inertia for the circular section is pi D 4 by 32 and rho the maximum distance from the uh, center which is uh, d by 2 here we are going to get the maximum shearing stress. So, that is d by 2. So, eventually this gives us uh, 16 t by pi d q. Now, this is what has been used over here. So, 16 times t, t is 1.1 into 10 to the power 6 divided by pi times d q, d is 60 that gives us a value of 26 mega Pascal. So, this is the value of the shearing stress and this is the value of the normal stress that uh, is developed at point A because of the action of the axial tensile pull and because of the twisting moment. So, because of the actions of these two individual loading which are acting simultaneously, uh, we are getting the stresses, the normal stress and the shearing stress of this much of magnitude, normal stress of 28.3 MPa and shearing stress of 26 MPa. Now, if we uh, plot these traces in the Mohr circle and the values or the directions are shown over here. 
sigma being uh, the tensile stress is a positive and tau here uh, is giving a shearing stress which is in the negative direction. Now, uh, if we plot this particular stress distribution sigma and tau that represents this particular point where sigma is equals to positive 28.3 and tau is negative 26 MPa. And uh, on the other plane we do not have the normal stress, but the shearing stress is present which is also equals to 26 MPa. And if we join these two points together we get the center of the Mohr circle. So, taking this point as the center let us call that as O and O uh, B as the radius we draw the Mohr circle. And this particular point represents the value of the maximum normal stress which is uh, represented by this particular distance and which is equals to as you know this particular distance which we call as O O dash and O O dash is equals to 28.3 by 2 because sigma y is 0 and this distance being sigma x minus sigma y by 2. So, we have uh, 28.3 by 2 which is 14.15 and so, this is also 14.15 and the shearing stress here is 26. So, the radius O B, this is O B, this is equals to 14.15 square plus 26 square and we get a value of 29.6 mega Pascal. So, the value of this distance is equals to distance O O dash plus the radius and O O dash is equals to 14.15 and 14.15 plus we have the radius which is equals to 29.6. So, if we add that then we get the value which is 43.75 so much of mega Pascal this we get for the maximum principal stress and this being positive this is the tensile stress that will be uh, occurring in the member at that particular point and this is the minimum principal stress which is equals to the radius 29.6 minus 14.15 and that gives us a value of 15.45 MPa. So, the maximum tensile stress that is occurring at that particular point is 43.75 MPa, the, the maximum compressive stress that is occurring is 15.45 MPa and the maximum value of the shearing stress, the in plane shearing stress that is occurring which is the radius of the Mohr circle is equals to 29.6 mega Pascal. So, these are the values which we wanted to have. So, as you can see that because of the action of the axial pull of 80 kilo Newton and a twisting moment of 1.1 kilo Newton meter, uh, the point A on the surface of this particular bar uh, is subjected to uh, a tensile stress which is equals to 43.75 mega Pascal and an in plane shear stress which is equals to 29.6 mega Pascal. So, these are the stresses that is acting on this particular uh, member and if you recollect that in the previous lesson uh, we had shown you that this particular type of uh, force distribution or the load uh, combination comes uh, in the case of a sap which is used in the helicopter uh, fan which moves you know is subjected to a twisting moment and because of this lift it is subjected to an axial pull as well. So, if we like to compute the value of the stresses, then we get the uh, stress in this form in such shafts. Well, let us uh, look into another interesting problem uh, where uh, this is a horizontal bracket A, B and C. Uh, it is in the horizontal plane. Now, this is subjected to a load at the tip. One is a vertical one which is of magnitude 2 kilo Newton and another one we have a load which is uh, 3 kilo Newton which is acting parallel to the arm A B. Now, uh, what we need to do is that we need to compute the value of the stresses at uh, a point D which is at the support which is at A. Now, if we look into the cross section, cross section again is a solid circular one with uh, diameter of 60 millimeter and we are interested to find out the stress at this particular point D. Now, what you will have to do is that you will have to compute the maximum tensile stress maximum compressive stress and maximum in plane shear stress. You will have to compute these three quantities at point D for this particular member. Now, as you can visualize that these particular forces which are acting at the tip, if we transport these forces at point B, they will be associated with some moments. Now, let us analyze the forces first that how we transport these forces 
to this tip of this particular beam. Now, uh, this bracket A B C uh, we can reduce it to a cantilever beam A B uh, which is fixed at A and free at B and in the process what we can do is we can shift this end loading to the point B which is the tip of this cantilever part. Now, the vertical force uh, which is of magnitude 2 kilo Newton if we shift at point B then uh, this is associated with a moment which is going to be a twisting moment. Now, so this vertical force 2 kilo Newton uh, is transferred at point B with a vertical force 2 kilo Newton and a moment T which is going to be a twisting moment for the uh, bar A B. The horizontal force which is of magnitude 3 kilo Newton if we shift to this point B uh, this gives us an axial thrust to member A B and is associated with a moment which is a bending moment at point B of magnitude 3 kilo Newton times this distance which is equals to 0.4 meter. So, uh, then the this particular member A B now if we disregard the member B C part B C of the bracket the member A B is subjected to a vertical load of magnitude 2 kilo Newton uh, a horizontal load of magnitude or axial load of magnitude 3 kilo Newton and a twisting moment T at the tip and a bending moment m at b. Now, the vertical load which is acting uh, at the tip at point b of magnitude 2 kilo Newton is also going to produce a bending moment at a. Now, if we look into the cross section you will find that load p will cause a bending moment about the z axis. Now, already we have a moment m which is acting about y axis we have a moment which is uh, acting about uh, y axis load p is going to cause a moment about z axis and we have t which is a twisting moment which is acting about the axis which is perpendicular to the board. Along with that we have the axial thrust which is of magnitude uh, 3 kilo Newton we have a uh, axial compressive force which is equals to 3 kilo Newton. Now, the interesting part is that we are interested to compute the value of the stress at point D. Now, if you look into this particular moment which is uh, being produced by load P of 2 kilo Newton. Now, this being uh, the neutral axis the stress on this because of this moment will be 0. So, at point D the moment which is being produced by 2 kilo Newton uh, does not have any effect. So, this particular point will be subjected to a compressive stress because of the axial compressive force will be subjected to a compressive stress because of the bending which is acting about y axis and will be subjected to the shearing action because of the twisting moment T that is acting at the end B. So, let us compute and also now at the end A because of this vertical load 2 kilo Newton there will be a shearing force component which will be producing the shearing stress. So, there will be shearing stress produced because of the uh, twisting moment T there will be shearing stress because of the shear force V, there will be bending stress because of M which is acting about uh, Z about Y axis and there will be normal stress because of the axial compressive force. So, the normal stress sigma uh, because of the axial compressive force is equals to the axial compressive force divided by the area which is equals to 1.061 mega Pascal. Now, the bending stress is equals to M Y by I. Now, the bending moment as we have seen that 3 kilo Newton is the horizontal load times uh, 0 0.4 millimeter uh, 0 0.4 meter is the lever arm. So, 3 times 0 0.4 gives you 1.2 meter kilo Newton meter as the bending moment. So, 1.2 into 10 to the power 6 into y is the 30 because we are computing from the neutral axis at a distance which is equals to 30. So, m y and i is the moment of inertia which is equals to pi d 4 by 64 which gives us this value. So, once we substitute that we get the bending stress as 56.6 mega Pascal which is compressive at this particular point. So, we have a normal stress which is compressive we got a normal stress from the bending which is compressive. So, if we add these up we get the total normal stress sigma which is equals to 57.661 mega Pascal. Now, we have the shearing stress tau which is arising from the twisting moment T 
and twisting moment T is equals to 2 into 0.4 meter which is equals to 0.8 kilo Newton meter and rho is the again is the distance which is 30 and j is twice the i. So, we get the stress as 18.86 mega Pascal that is the shearing stress which is arising from the twisting moment. Also the shearing force uh, at this end is equals to this 2 kilo Newton. So, for the 2 kilo Newton as we know that the shear stress distribution across the diameter of a circular cross section as we have seen in on the module of the shear stress that the values e equals to 4 third V by A. So, if we compute the value tau 2 equals to 4 V by 3 A, we get the magnitude of the shear stress as 0 0.94 mega Pascal. So, if we add these two tau 1 and tau 2, we get the resulting shearing stress that is acting at D is equals to 19.8 mega Pascal. So, you see this is the element which is at D. Uh, which is subjected to a normal compressive stress of this magnitude and a shearing stress of this magnitude. Now, if we plot these stresses in the uh, Mohr circle, then uh, we get the stresses like this that we have uh, at this point sigma which is negative and tau also is negative. So, this is the point which represents the uh, plane where you have the normal stress and the shearing stress. And this is the plane perpendicular plane where we do not have any normal stress, but the shearing stress again is 19.8. And if we join these two points together, we get this as the center where it cuts the uh, sigma axis. And considering this as the center and taking this O A as the radius, if we plot the circle, we get the more circle of stress. And this is the stress which is the maximum compressive stress and this is the stress which is going to give us the maximum tensile stress. Now, the value of the radius O A is equals to as we have seen is a half of this uh, 57.66 uh, and 19.8 if we take these two value 57.6 is divided by 2 will give you 28.83 that square and vertical distance is 19.8 square. So, this is going to give us the value of the radius which is equals to 35 mega Pascal. So, uh, this is the value of the uh, radius of this Mohr circle. Now, uh, what we need to do is that we need to compute the value of the maximum compressive stress and the maximum tensile stress. Now, maximum compressive stress as you can see from this particular diagram, uh, this is equals to let us call this as point uh, B. So, O B is equals to the half the stress of 57.66 plus the, the radius. Now, let us call this point as O dash. So, O O dash is equals to uh, 28.83 which is half of 57.66 and O B is equals to the radius which is equals to 35. So, if we add these two 28.83 plus 35, you get the stress which is the normal stress and that is on the other side of the positive sigma axis. So, this is negative and this we call as the compressive stress. So, this is the magnitude 63.83 mega Pascal is the uh, compressive stress that is occurring at that particular point and then the other side the positive value of the Mohr cycle which we get the normal stress which we get on this side which is of positive magnitude the 28.83 is this particular distance and the radius is equals to 35 and if we add that we get 6.17 mega Pascal and this is the value of the maximum uh, tensile stress. So, at the member at that particular point, you have the magnitude of the maximum compressive stress which is 63.83 mega Pascal and 6.17 is the uh, 6.17 mega Pascal is the maximum tensile stress. Now, uh, the value of the maximum shearing stress in plane shearing stress if you look into will be given by the uh, radius of this particular circle which is uh, given by this particular distance and this is what is equals to the maximum value of the tau that is on the tau axis we get this is the point this is the maximum value of the shearing stress and tau max is equals to the radius which is equals to 35 mega Pascal. So, uh, we have these three quantities now the maximum compressive stress as 63.83 mega Pascal, maximum tensile stress as 6.17 mega Pascal and the maximum shearing stress as 35 mega Pascal. So, these are the values these are the values at that particular point 
when the bracket is subjected to uh, tip loads, one in the vertical direction, another in the horizontal direction, which is parallel to AB. Now, these two forces compute the stresses at the support, uh, which gives you the maximum tensile, maximum compressive and the shearing stresses of the magnitudes as we have calculated over here. Well, uh, we have another example problem over here. Now, this is a sign board as we have discussed last time that uh, many times we use these signs for giving the directions and when the wind forces act on such signs, it produces combined uh, force actions on the vertical members and this particular board is subjected to a uh, wind load of 1.8 kilo Pascal. You will have to find out the maximum in plane shear stress as 3 point A, B and C. So, you solve this problem, I am going to discuss this in the next lesson. Well, uh, then to summarize, uh, in this particular lesson, we have uh, looked into the aspects of the previous lesson. Now, we have looked into some more aspects of the combined loading actions. In the last lesson, we had discussed that what are the forms of different combined loadings that a member is subjected to. Now, in this particular case, we have looked into some more aspect of such combined loading and therefore, and thereby we have uh, looked into some examples to evaluate combined stresses in member after analyzing the members for the proper loading. Now, these are the questions uh, given for you. How will you evaluate the combined stresses in the member if the member is subjected to torsion and bending moment? How will you evaluate the principal stresses in, in the member if the member is subjected to torsion and bending moment? And what is the value of normal stress on the neutral axis when the member is subjected to torsion and bending? Well, I uh, will discuss this in the next lesson. Meanwhile, you can go through the lesson and look into these questions. Thank you. Welcome to the third lesson of the eighth module, which is on combined stresses part 3. Now, in the last two lessons of this particular module, we have looked into that we have discussed several aspects of the combined loadings and thereby uh, we have evaluated the combined stresses in members when they are subjected to different forms of combined loading. Now, we have discussed that if a member is subjected to axial load and bending, then what happens to the combined stresses or if a member is subjected to a twisting moment and a normal axial force then what happens to the stresses or if a member is subjected to the combined loading actions of the twisting moment and the bending moment or the shear force, then what happens to the combined stresses. Those aspects we have looked into. Now, in this particular lesson, we are going to look into some more aspects of combined loading where if a pressure vessel which we have earlier analyzed for the pressures only, now if they are subjected to the external forces like the axial pull or the compressive force or if they are subjected to uh, twisting moment or if the whole vessel a cylindrical vessel is supported onto supports and thereby some bending is induced into the member. Then in addition to the stresses that is being induced because of the pressure inside, what happens to when they are subjected? <laughs> Thank you.